So Whiskers the cat falls from the third floor balcony, 10 meters downwards. She is woken from her, her nap during the, the fall, as you might expect. And then she lands gracefully on her little paws when she lands on the ground, because as we all know, cats land on their feet, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm sure there's ways you can keep that from happening, but we're gonna say that she lands on her feet, okay? Very safe, there's nothing, no cruelty to animals. What I would like to, to find out here, actually, you know, before I even wanna ask you uh, to solve for something, let's write down what we know, okay? We know the little whiskers sitting on the balcony. Draw a cat as best you can. And if it looks as bad as that, that's okay. That's a cat. That's a, yeah, it's a cat. You want to make it a nicer cat? You can make it a nicer cat. Oh, that's looking sort of like a pig. <laughs> anyway. Little cat. Whiskers the cat. Sitting on a balcony. Um, we should write in our givens. She's going down. And that's going to be our displacement. 10 meters. What's her initial velocity if, she, if she's sleeping? Zero. So she must just sort of roll over, but negligible velocity. And we're saying that she has an initial velocity of zero meters per second. And you know, as you're labeling up a diagram like this, it actually is helpful to think through the problem. And I know this is like a ridiculously simple problem, but it actually is helpful to draw the little scenario and label it up as you go along. It helps you to pick picture what's happening, especially when the problem is more difficult than this. Um, you also need to, for marks, identify what direction is positive and what direction is negative. Uh, I would recommend one particular direction to be positive in this case to make our lives easier. What direction do you suppose I would recommend? How many people say up? How many people say down? Okay, let the record state that the decision was unanimous for making down positive, okay? Despite what the little kids might tell you, it's okay to make down positive sometimes, okay? So down, it's going to be our positive value. And that's actually kind of nice. So the delta D value can be a positive. Um, any velocities are all going to be positive. She's never going to have a, a negative velocity now because we're not going to think about what happens if she bounces. Um, okay, she's always going down as far as we're, consider we're concerned. Okay, so I've got some, some values written down here. Um, another piece of information that's going to sort of be implied is gravity because here we are on Earth. And around these parts, acceleration due to gravity in our classroom is about 9.81 meters per second squared. And that's going to be a value we're going to use all semester. How many significant digits does that include? Three. Yeah, so I'm going to make a note of it. Of the values that we know, we've got three sig digs. All right? That's the sig digs for our givens. Yes, sir? Should those values have direction or just because you're like... Well, we're drawing it on a diagram, and since they have positive values, we're implying that they have direction. Okay, and if, if you wanted to be, um, maybe extra defining of these values, since it's a tetra diagram, we don't really have to put them in there, but we could. All right, so we've got our values. Um, we haven't even asked a question yet, though. So let's ask the question. Find her, you know, some people like to call it her final velocity, and some people like to call it her impact velocity. I'm going to kind of call it her, well, I'm going to call it her final velocity because that's the terminology that most people use. Um, but I want you, having said final velocity, I want you to recognize that some people might say, well, what if her legs buckle and she makes a real splat sort of sound, okay? <laughs> In that case, some people would argue that her final velocity is zero because she's a, a not a live cat, okay? <laughs> when we say final velocity in a scenario such as this, the final means the final velocity she has for the duration of this trip that we're discussing. So we're implying that it's an impact velocity, okay? So find her final velocity. So basically the velocity as she approaches the ground. Yeah, her at the moment of impact. 
find her final velocity. And if that's what we're, we're to be finding, that means that we're going to write V2 equals question mark. So now we have the question all framed up. And we have some equations of motion that we, we've sort of discussed so far. So I'm just going to slide them up on the screen. V2, v, uh, sorry, equation 1 through equation 5. Given what we know and what we want to know, what would be a, a good choice for a formula here, for an equation? Yeah? Let's see, we, we know V1, we know acceleration, we know delta D, and we would like to know V2. Yeah? Yeah? Number four? Let's see. We know V1, we know acceleration, we know delta D. I like it. That works. Okay, let, let's do it. We'll plug in our values. I mean, it's just substitution, right? So we're going to say V2 squared equals V1 squared plus 2A delta D. This is just substitution. We don't even have to rearrange this equation to isolate for the desired variable, although that could be fair game if we, we had such values to make that necessary. But we don't have to this time. V2 squared, instead of writing V2 squared, I'm going to write V2 equals the square root of everything on the right hand side, because we're going to have to square root both sides anyhow. Um, zero meters per second squared. And notice that I'm writing the units here. Plus 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared times 10.0 meters. And notice I didn't write 10, I wrote 10.0, writing out all those significant digits. Now, 0 squared is still 0, so that's kind of a, a trivial value. Um, 2 times 9.81 times 10 is going to be 196.2. But we have to deal with the units. Meters squared times meters. What are those units? I heard somebody whisper it. What was it? Oh, I thought you whispered it. That's oh, okay. You can shout it out. Come on. Take a risk. Live a little. What was it? Yeah. I wish I had a prize to give you. Meters squared per second squared. All I can give you is honor. Feel honored. Meters squared per second squared. That's exactly the units. Okay? And there's nothing dangerous about that because we still haven't done our square root. Right? Meters squared per second squared, not very meaningful, but meters squared per second squared square rooted is meters per second. Or we could say it's 14.00, uh, and I had this written down previously, 714 meters per second. Now, I've gone more than two, two digits further than my appropriate number of three significant digits that I want to round to in the end. So I can say approximately, you know, we always write down an unrounded value. Always, always, always. If you don't, you've done it wrong. Because I might want to use this V2 value unrounded later on in a future calculation. Um, and rounded to two sig digs, 14.0 meters per second. And then we could say, uh, therefore, um, whiskers lands safely, no, not being too morbid here, but is this really safe? No. 14 meters per second, that's like, it's like shooting a cat out of a rifle almost. 14 meters per second, that's a fast cat. Um, lands safely on her feet, but let's suspend our disbelief at 14.0 meters per second down. Okay, and that's where the word gets inserted, because we're having a little conversational therefore statement at the end. Okay. Now, I've got my V2 now. So I could, I could write it in over here. But let's say that somebody says, oh, that was just part A. Please don't write this. I just want to write it, okay? So what if? What if there was a part B? Find the time for the fall. So I'm just going to short form it. Find the delta t. Let's think this through. And I want to bring the equation of motion, equations of motion back again. What's a good equation of motion to use for this if I wanted to find her fall time? Yeah? Yeah. Look, I got the final velocity. I got the initial velocity. I got acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. No problem. Now, the only downside to that, and this is the only downside to that, 
what if I screwed up part A? Wouldn't that make part B wrong too? So that's a risk. I feel pretty confident that I did part A right, so I probably would take that risk. Would you use the rounded value or the unrounded value? Unrounded. unrounded. Always, always the unrounded value. If you're going to use a previously found calculated value in a, a new calculation, you've got to use the unrounded value. Keep in mind that the significant digits you're going to have to round to in the end carry over, so you're still going to have to round to three sig digs in the end, but you always use the unrounded value. Why? What do you introduce if you don't do that? You're, you're introducing more inaccuracies by prematurely rounding. That's the idea, okay? So I could use equation one. Is there another equation that I could use? What's that? Number five. Yeah, could use number five, sure. Is there another equation I could use? Yeah. Sure, you could use number two. Could you use number three? I got V1, I've got delta D, I've got A. Could I solve for delta T? Sure you could. You might have to use a quadratic. In this particular case, do I have to use a quadratic? What's the V1 value? Remember, it was a falling cat from rest. What's V1 equal to? Yeah, so that actually, in that case, would simplify out. And then I would just say delta D is equal to 1 half AT squared. Not a quadratic. Ooh. Ooh, sweet. Okay. Um, again, we've got, it looks like, because we really can use everything except for equation 4, We've got four ways to solve this question. Is any one of them more right than another? No, sir. Makes it a pain for me as a marker because i got to think through your logic every time. But for you, it's tremendously freeing. You've got four different ways to solve the same freaking question about this little cat. Okay? Good news for everybody, except me.